Let's welcome on the head coach of the Louisville Leopards football team, Troy Davis. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Coach, looking at this, you you got a huge win, I believe, on Friday night. And I think this was a, a win that the program not only needed, but I think the community needed because we know Louisville. We know how nuts you guys are for football up there and how big this is for the program. Talk to me a little bit about the growth you've seen from week one until now from your boys that ultimately culminated in that victory. Yeah, the biggest growth was character. I mean, we, you know, we knew that we have great, we know that we have great kids, um, you know, to be able to persevere through eight weeks uh, of going without a win and going into Alliance at a visitor stadium and, and an old rival of ours going into that stadium and being able to come out with a win was, uh, was just a tribute to their character and how strong they are internally to go into week nine being 0 and 8 and come out with a victory in a hard, hard fought game against some good football players. You know, we, we talked before the season started out uh, uh, on Running Point. I think we had a season preview with you, and we talked about how proud this football program really is and how proud the his history of it is. Talk about the the ability to stay confident through this tough stretch for the your kids and how they were able to go into each game with the belief and understanding that they, that they could win a game and then eventually getting that result on uh, on week nine. Well, you know, it really comes down to our senior class. Our senior class has been a, a group of kids that you know want to be, they want to be different. They want to bring back the winning tradition of Louisville football. Um, each week, you know, we had our opportunities. Um, we play a lot of opponents that are Division Two, Division One, um, until we got to Week Nine, where we got to a Division Three opponent. But they remained steady, and they remained, uh, you know, in terms of each week in practice, trying to to fix the mistakes, you know, and from uh, fixing turnover issues to, you know, penalty issues to execution issues and to finally be able to put four quarters together. We had, we had had some games where we put two quarters together and some games where we put three and some games where we only had one quarter put together. But going on Friday night, we were able to put four full quarters together and come out with a victory. Looking in future uh, games and future seasons, how dangerous do you think this Leopards team can be if you guys can consistently put those four quarters together? Yeah, I mean, we showed it Friday night that, you know, we could really move the ball. We had a chance to uh, really blow the game out of the water before half. And, uh, you know, we had a penalty that called back a touchdown. We missed a field goal late in the game. And so, you know, like this team has potential. You know, when we went up and played green, we we exploded in the first half of that game, uh, suffered from an injury in the second half, and it kind of slowed us down. This team's got 17 uh, returning starters coming back next year. So, you know, not only this week, we want to end on a high note. And, and get a victory down in West Virginia. But, uh, you know, looking forward to next year, we have, like I said, 17 um, lettermen coming back for this football team. So many team, so many players coming back next year. You still brought it up earlier. The senior leadership has been so important to get through this season. Highlight some of your best leaders and some of the kids that have really taken it upon themselves to, to put this team on their shoulders and, and get them through this season. You know, there's a long list of them. Um, just, you know, to highlight Friday night, you, know, you got Caleb Miller playing quarterback who had had a, some issues early in the season and, and shared time with uh, their, our other quarterback and then got his opportunity to come back in this week due to injury. Actually came back last week due to injury, played well last week, um, and then came in against Alliance and just, you know, exploded in terms of running the ball. And, and just as he went throughout the game, continued to move more and more uh, at gaining yards, gained more yards in the second half running the ball than he did in the first half. And then, you know, you got Connor Edelman, who's been with us, you know, a three-year starter. Um, he just continues to – he's hard to bring down. You know, for example, he gets hit once. But if one tackler generally doesn't bring him down. He made one run in that Lions game where I think uh, four or five kids hit him before he got nine yards. Um, you know, they got Zach Seaman, who is a competitor, looks at me in the fourth quarter and says uh, – let's it's around the 50 yard line and, you know, he's a competitor and, and I know that he's going to grind for those yards. We, we went with that call and, and we made it, um, you know, guys like that are just, you know, selling out for the team. Cam Brazic, another senior that is just selling out for the team. We lost Riston Jobes who had, had really done a great job for us at running back. And we lost him in the Perry game. Another kid just, just fighting through and doing what he can to win football games for us. 
lot of uh, a lot of programs talk about Friday night football nights being the biggest night for them as far as the, the attendance they get. But it seems like Louisville, no matter what sport is going on, it feels like Friday night football. But talking about the football support and having fans back in the stands this year, talk to me a little bit about what that's been like for the team and what it's been like for you, for a coach, to have those that community back supporting you guys in the stands each and every uh, week that you're home. Yeah, you're, you're right about Louisville fans in terms of the sports. They come out and they support their passionate exciting fans they expect to see good football they expect to see good performance by all of our sports with great character and great performance but walk into Louisville Stadium such a great environment and to see it uh, full of fans and you know the fireworks going off and the, the smoke coming out of the uh, the grills at the other end and people lined up around you know right up next to the field it's just a great place to play exciting place to play and uh, I love having our fans back in the stadium especially the kids. Nice to see the young kids back in the stadium, get a chance to see our kids play football. Yeah, we're, we're almost through the season and we're in week 10. What has been your favorite thing about coaching this team and being able to lead uh, these group of young men? Yeah, honestly, my favorite thing was Friday night and not just because of the win, but because, you know, I preach all along the year about, you know, you got to be able to, it's like that Rocky scene where, you know, Rocky says to his son, you know, it doesn't matter how hard you get hit. It matters whether or not you keep moving forward. And so that was our message going in Friday night. And just to be able to see the kids continue to believe in themselves. I talked to them in the huddle at halftime and said, you know, we're the only ones that have gone through this O and eight. We're the ones that have had to live it. We've had people tell us what we can do, tell us what we can't do and tell us what we can do. Uh, but we're the ones that had to live it and answer to it every week. And to see our kids push through after being O and eight and get a victory um, that was my favorite thing to see the, the growth in our in our players. And not a not a scoffing victory at that either. It's a, good, a very good victory against a very good quality Alliance team that you were able to get over this season. And you've played a lot of tough teams this season. And I think that's going to help you guys in the future. Talk to me a little bit now. Uh, future seasons, you talk seventeen returning starters. What are some things that maybe you want to look to do differently? Uh, next season to try to find a little bit more success with this team? Yeah, we want to be more dynamic on offense. We, you know, we, we worked hard early to secure the ball. That was a big problem for us. Um, we want to be more creative offensively and try to highlight our players. Um, I think we, we had some protection issues early in the season that we, we fixed. We have four um, of our offensive linemen are juniors. And so I look for that to come into next season, being able to be a strong with our protection and run game. Um, so, yeah, we want to build off of those kind of things. Um, you know, looking at next year's schedule, it's going to be difficult again. Um, but, you know, coming into it with the experience and the know-how and the things that we have put into place and had success with, you know, we had some things this year that in different games we were very successful with that we want to continue to build on for next year, both offensively and defensively. You know, with uh, before the season, I believe the motto was built different and that you guys had this year. Uh, on the on the shirts and things, um, you know, going through this year, me and Ty talked about it before you came on. A lot of teams would have packed it in zero and eight, and you guys didn't. Do you think this proves that that motto true about this team that you guys are just built different than other teams, and you guys have this uh, unique ability to kind of get off the mat when you're when you're down? You know, it's funny you say that because I I was actually thinking about that this weekend. You know, because I have I've got a bunch of those shirts that say "built different" and in the wristbands and things like that. And and our schedule says that every time I look at it. And you know, at one point I was thinking, you know, built different. You know, we want to be ten and zero. We want to be built different. Um, but you know, um, as you, as you look at the season and I, and I look at Friday night and I think about built different and in terms of our society and and what. And, and who will put in the work and who will stay committed to things and to see it finish. And I thought, you know what, we do have a bunch of kids that are built different because there are kids that are, that are still willing to go out there and play their hardest and do their best, even though they know that there may not be, there's not going to be playoffs after this. You know, there's no guarantees for, for anything after this, but they still went out there and fought to get a victory. And that is truly, especially in our day and age, built different. Thank <laughs> you.
I think uh, anytime you talk about the Louisville community as a whole, I think that community is built different from its support to uh, to all of its sports. But talking a little bit about this now, Coach, and talking a little bit about going into this this final week of the season, what are some of the the keys to come away with that that other victory? You talk about how important it is, even in Week Ten, where playoffs are kind of uh, out of out of the picture now, but still to get that win and carry momentum into the next season. What are some keys to get that victory this week? Yeah, so keys for our victory this week are going to be to be able to contain their quarterback. They have a really elusive quarterback. Those kids are tremendously fast. They had great games against uh, Central. Uh, and then they went down to Dover last week, and they had a difficult game against Dover, and Dover was able to shut them down. You know, we want to be able to do what we do. Um, we want to be able to grind it out on the ground maintain possession we had a, i think a 23 or 26 uh play drive against the lions last week eat up a ton of clock you know they can't score while you have the ball and and uh, and then if we finish that drive with a kick then we've done our job and uh you know so we want to do that and then uh like i said on defense we want to be able to contain this quarterback and, and slow down this slot receiver coach before we let you go uh just talk a little bit about uh your reflections on the, uh, reflections on this year, your favorite memories with this team, and what you're going to kind of treasure about this season as a whole. Yeah, I, it goes back to last week, you know, and it's easy to go back to last week with the victory. But, you know, looking in, in, in some of our players' eyes, you know, again, Caleb Miller, looking in his eyes, and, and his season was exactly a carbon copy of, of the whole season for us in terms of fighting through adversity, believing in yourself, getting the job done, and in, in working until you can get the reward and that's uh, earning the reward. That's the thing that, you know, all these kids are going to take with them uh, to help them be the greatest people they can be in, in their future lives. And that, that's really what it comes down to as a coach. You know, you want to be able to give the kids something and help guide them into something that's going to be able to propel them into a great future. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It was great to talk to you. Great to catch up with this program. Good luck uh, this week, and we look forward to talking to you again real soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care.